morning everybody welcome welcome to another daily book read through this is chance and i hope all is going well with you no matter where you are in the country or in the world this morning we are continuing our daily read through of this brand new book strategic secrets and so what i want to cover today is very very important good morning dr cooper Today's topic is super crucial. It goes in conjunction with yesterday's. But one of the things I believe that if you heed the message of this chapter today, definitely the future of your life can be bright, right? By the way, I'm wearing a nice T-shirt today. This is uh, one of my friends. He has a ministries, and um, so he wanted me to wear his shirt on the show today. If you have a good message and a good cause that you'd like me to also highlight on a daily basis, program that's fine i don't mind wearing it provided the message is positive and good so anyhow common sense um equals perfect sense and he has a good saying in the back too so because what's common is not always you know common practice so i think it's a good reminder so how are you guys doing um uh, uh, mr chance good morning there how are you doing um are you in Ceylon? i know there's carnival happening down there uh, I don't know where you are at this time, but wherever you are, blessings on you. Dr. Cooper, again, blessings on you. I hope you have a blessed day today. Okay, so let's delve right into it for those who will catch the replay. Again, if you don't have the book, please, by all means, go to strategicsecrets.com. The link is in the description right here. But uh, please get the book, read along. Uh, the chapters, like we said, they are not super long chapters because we want you to get through the book. You can, uh, most people can do it like a, a daily meditation, a, a daily devotional along those lines. That's why we made made it like that. So, to this uh, topic, what are we talking about? Chapter twenty-four. What do you have in your hand? So, the reason why this is important is because. The very thing that you are looking for to go to the next level in your relationships, your finances, your business, whatever it may be, I want to let you know that you already have it. Yeah, like seriously, the answers to whatever it uh, has been perplexing you for the last couple of days, weeks, months, and perhaps years is already within your reach. How do we know? Well, let me give you two quick examples. One um, from the biblical narrative, Exodus chapter 4. You remember it, in this story, right, the Israelites had a problem. So let's take that to mean us, right, to make an analogy. So we always have some kind of uh, problem we're trying to solve. We need a solution. So much like ourselves, the Israelites, they were in bondage. They didn't like their situation. It was oppressive. And so they wanted to get out. So they cried out unto God like most of us would do, right? We cry out because we want to solve this particular uh, challenge that we have. So they cried out. And, and you know the narrative. God says that he's going to send them a deliverer. So he raises up someone called Moses. So Moses was the answer to their prayer. All right. Just like we're telling you, the answer to your prayer has already been there. If you followed yesterday's and well, the last two or three chapters, you will realize that the answers are already there. So if you've committed into prayer, I believe that God always answers prayer whether it is yes, no, wait, or whatever it may be, but every prayer is answered in some way, shape, or form. So here's the thing. So now Moses is, um, you know, it has encountered with God. He went to the burning bush situation. And of course, God already manifested himself. But what does Moses do? Moses began to make excuses. Now, here's the thing. If you met with God in such a fashion, I mean, hearing an audible voice even from a burning bush, something that is totally abnormal, I mean, you would be like, wow, this is truly God. So Moses now is saying, you know, he didn't want to go on the mission. Like he, you know, he just wanted to be a regular guy like most of us. We don't really want greatness. Like we don't mind succeeding. But many of us, I'm telling you, most professionals fear ultra success or massive success. We don't mind succeeding, but we don't want to go to the high, high levels. So that's what that's that's what it was with Moses. He had gotten comfortable being a shepherd, you know? He got married, and so he went on and take care of the sheep, and that was cool. But to go on a mission of greatness, to deliver God's people out of bondage, now that's another story. So God proceeded to do several miracles, right? You remember he told him to put his hand here, and then he pulled it out, and, you know, it was leprous, and then he put it back in, and he pulled it back out, and it was all healed. And then God said, what do you have in your hand? And he put down the staff. He was like, well, this is just a rod, you know, a staff. It's not going to do anything. So he put it down, turned it into a snake, pick it back up. And it's like, whoa, 
okay, God, I see what you're doing. Now, this is the same question I believe God is asking all of us. What do you already have in your hand, right? What do you have in your hand? Now, you would also know the, there's another story in the, in, the, in the book of Kings, right, of the widow. Remember, there's a widow. Her husband died, and, of course, that was a tragedy. Uh, she was a, now a, a single woman uh, with children. The husband left her in financial bondage, like most people do, right? So she was in debt, and the debt collectors were calling all the time, and they said, listen, if you don't pay, we're going to even take your children. Now, what is a broke, poor widow to do? Well, she did what most of us would do uh, last. She cried out and she asked for help. She went to get help. So, of course, she went to the mightiest prophet at the time. And so the prophet, just like how God asked Moses the question, the prophet asked her this simple question. What do you have in your house? You see, he's not going to do some, sometimes we expect God to do some crazy, miraculous thing. But the reality is the miracle that we are seeking for is pretty much within our reach already. And that's why sometimes we don't understand how prayer works. But I tell you, it's a science. God involves human beings most of the times to answer our prayers. And so, so the, the widow replied, well, I don't have anything. She discounted the little that she had. Then she said, well, I don't have anything in the house except this small jar of oil. This small. So she was discounting her gifts, her talents, the things that were given to her. She discounted them. So to her, it was insignificant. So she said, all I have is just this little jar of oil. And Elijah, you know, the prophet said, listen, we're going to work with that. We'll work with that. And so he said, listen, go and borrow as many jars as possible. You know the story. And she went and borrowed from her neighbors and so forth. And she started pouring oil. And all these one jar after the next began to be filled, began to be filled until she ran out of jars. And then the miracle stopped. And then the woman had enough money to pay all of her bills. How would you like that today to be debt free? Right? A miracle like that. God can perform something right now for you to become debt free, for you to become uh, drama free in your relationships and solve whatever business um, you know, uh, issue that you have at the moment. So let's apply that. Let's apply that today. Now, here's how another way we can put it. What do you have in your mind? What ideas that you've been sitting on? Because many times as we're praying about something, rolling it over in our brains at night, what happens is we will get ideas but we don't act on them. See, implementation is what kills most people. I did that in the early chapters, right? Implementation is what separates winners and losers because most people fail to implement. Not only that, but what do you have in your heart? What are you passionate about? What keeps coming up over and over and over again for you? Another th way to put it is what do you already have that you can use to bless yourself, to deliver you out of troubles or any kind of si situations? What do you have? So here's some exercise to help you gauge what you can possibly use or give to God that he can use to bless you, to deliver you, and to make you successful or great. Now, so I want you to list several things that you currently own, right? No matter how insignificant you feel that it may be, okay, please write it down. Write down about three to seven things. What do you own that you can have? For example, um, you know, we, we own books, we own clothes, we own different things. So we say, I want to bless the poor. I don't know how to, to bless them. I don't have anything. Well, there are some people who don't have as much clothes. You can take some clothes down to the goodwill and give it away, right? That can be one of the ways. Uh, in my neighborhood the other day, uh, one of the neighbors put out like two or three brand new bikes. Like they were moving and they just put them on the sidewalk, you know, but here's the thing. When, when I went for a walk and I came back, <laughs> within that short period of time, those bikes were gone because they became a blessing to somebody else. So even though they're trash, you know, because those bikes were looking real good. I ain't going to lie. They were really, really nice bikes. But they, it was extra stuff. And they didn't need it, but it was a blessing for someone else. Now, uh, what are you really good at? Like, what comes easier naturally to you? That might be a clue that you can use something to either bless yourself, deliver you from troubles, or even bless someone else. Uh, what degrees and certification that you have? Do you know that most people actually, when we graduate, especially from the level, most people do not really work in their chosen field of study, right? You get into something else because the reality is in today's environment, uh, what happens is, I mean, sometimes a degree just gets you into the door, right? But you can probably study, let's say you, you did history, 
but you might end up working in a marketing company, for example, right? That has nothing to do with your degree, but the degree just got you into the door. But how can you take that history degree now and maybe do something? In today's economy, we, I would say you can teach online, for example, uh, people history, you can go volunteer at the library and um, teach, you can do something extra on the side, uh, all right? So that's what we're talking about. So if you have those credentials, uh, different degrees or different trainings or certifications, you can leverage those outside of what you're currently doing. For example, again, let's take it the, the issue of uh, becoming debt free. So many people need to and want to become debt free and they, they possibly can't do it with their job because obviously a job only pays you a set salary. So, but if you can leverage the knowledge, the expertise and the training that you already have, and you can create an extra income. It doesn't mean you always have to go deliver pizza and, and, and get an, a, another minimum wage job. You don't have to keep doing those things. Like you got to think outside the box, right? Like this widow, sometimes it's the simplest thing that we can do. We make it complicated. No, simplicity is one of the keys to success, all right? Um, another thing is uh, for people who are on this uh, program, many of you are highly educated. Have you written a dissertation or a thesis, a master's thesis, are you right? Some people, again, we just let those things sit in, in the, you know, in the university catching dust. Nobody's really reading your, your stuff. Why not turn your dissertation into a book, into an online course? That's what I did, right? I've written a couple of books from my dissertation because I've took, taken just several chapters out of that and, and, and developed them into a book, right? Two years ago, I wrote a book called Monetize Your Skills. Well, it was my master's degree research. And that I turn into a book and an online course, and it has yielded uh, significant uh, financial returns. So that's the kind of stuff that we're talking about. When you are praying, and this concept for this chapter came about for the very same thing. Um, when I left my nonprofit, uh, let's see, in 2012, when I when I when I left the nonprofit that I was with for seven years uh, to get into what I'm doing now. Of course, we needed significant money still to do, um, you know, humanitarian and mission work overseas. And so it's like, OK, well, I'm no longer with the organization. The organization used to have all the monies to do that stuff. But the passion is still in my heart. I want to do this thing. And now I'm, I'm on a, you know, a simple pastor's salary. That's not going to do much. So this is the this is the outbirthing of all of this stuff that I'm sharing with you. So, again, in my prayer time, this is what God, I believe he revealed in my heart is that why don't you take all your knowledge and gifts and talents that you have and produce products and programs that can be a blessing for people and therefore you'll have money to do these mission trips. You don't have to bother people and ask for donations. So seldomly do I ask for donations. I do you know, occasionally, but most of the stuff that comes now for mission trips come from basically entrepreneurial venture, uh, ventures. You do things to be able to create income that will help you to do these mission trips, to do humanitarian work, to bless the poor, to sponsor students, these different things. So that's what I want you to do this morning. Think about it. What do you have in your hand? It's a very powerful question. Think about it. What do you already have in your hand, in your mind, in your brain, in your heart that you already own, that you can leverage this to solve the problem that is right before you. If you've been praying about anything, again, no matter what the area of your life is, it could be your relationship. Who do you already know that you can go and get help, right? It could be your physical health. Who do you know that's getting results, right? Who, uh, what doctor can you go to that can be uh, probably better than the one you have because maybe the one you have is not really solving the problem, but you probably know somebody else at your church or, or at whatever organization you belong to. You just talk to somebody. Sometimes even a promotion is simple as asking your boss. Sometimes we don't want to ask because we're shy. But if you have been doing a stellar job, you've been excellent, you know, why not take a chance on it? Like, hey, go on, tell the boss, man, listen, um, you know, I've been doing an excellent job and here are the results. And this is how I've contributed to the company's overall success. And, um, you know, I, I think I deserve a, a promotion. You never know. Give it a shot. If God is with you, he might just be opening that door. Or you might be opening a whole new job, like check somewhere else. You don't always have to be blessed in one area. Sometimes you have to move to another area. So that can mean the difference between being blessed locally or being blessed somewhere. Sometimes our blessings is in another location. So the same thing, the Israelites were in Egypt. They could not receive the blessing of the promised land until they leave Egypt. 
So many of us are in bondage. Egypt, bondage, Egypt for us represents anything that is oppressive in our life, anything that is holding us back, anything that is preventing us from becoming who we are destined to be. So if you are in a hard place, call that Egypt. The promised land means you have to get out. You probably got to cross the Red Sea. So you're going to need some miracles, but use what God has given to you already. Cry out to him in prayer. Use the strategies that we've spoken about in the last two days. And if you do these things, pretty soon you'll enter into your promised land. So your promised land is not too far away, right? Actually, you know, the narrative says that the Israelites could have actually crawled. They didn't need to spend 40 years in the wilderness. It could have actually taken 40 days for them to get to the promised land. But it took them, guess what? 40 long years to be able to get to the promised land because they were lollygagging and doing foolish stuff. But you don't have to take that long. The solution to your problem, let me just let you know, the solution to your problem is within your reach. Think about it. Use what you have in your hand. Use what you have in your mind. Use your connections, your network, the people that you know. Use what God has put in your heart. And by and by, trust me, before the week is out, your problem could already be solved. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, one Lefty Hall, good morning. My brother, how are you doing? Blessings on you today. Enjoy your day. So no matter what you do, go out there and make a difference in your workplace. Be a blessing to someone today and make sure you get the book. If you don't have it yet, please go to strategicsecrets.com. Get your copy. It's going to change your life for the better. God bless you. I'll see you on tomorrow.